that. We think, how in the world can a person use God? But so often, um, I mean, I think one of the temptations for all of us in life is to try to get God to do things our way. And we follow God, and sometimes even we pray. And some, I've known people who even went through religious practices in order to get God to kind of see things their way and answer their prayers and grant their wishes. Uh, those kind of, you know, that kind of approach to the faith. Back, um, uh, the ancient Canaanites had two gods, uh, Baal and his female cohort Aristartes, and they were uh, gods of the storms or the rain and of fertility. And uh, the, 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 those ancient cults would uh, uh, would worship their their gods and their goddess in order to secure uh, many children and and many crops and uh, success and prosperity. Uh, as opposed to the God who brought the Hebrew people out of Israel, their idea was that uh, uh, that God had had taken the initiative and had, had called His people, and, and God was asking not to be used by the people, but God was wanting a people who would love Him and follow Him, and and, and not try to use Him, but follow Him, and uh, and and submit to His ways for their lives. and And the prophet Elijah recognized this, and he recognized that there 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 had to be there had to be a decision made by the people. Who, who, who are you going to follow? Who's, who's God? And uh, the showdown that took place between the prophets of Baal and Aristarchus and the God of Israel took place right here, not some other place, right? right, Just about where you're standing right now. And you remember the story from 1 Kings where uh, Elijah invited the prophets to build an altar. He said, let's build two altars. We'll prepare the sacrifice. We'll lay it on both altars, and the gods of Baal can call upon him, and I'll call upon the Lord, and we'll see who brings the fire. We'll let the Lord start the fire. That was fascinating how Johnny was talking about how many fires are up here on the on the on Mount Carmel. Well, there's a fire about uh, 2,700 years ago up here too. And it was started by God. That one. Uh, so they, they, the prophets of Baal build their altar out at, of at at dry wood and, and they, they call upon Baal and, and uh, uh, nothing happens. And he starts to taunt them. And he says, you know, your God's a God. What, what's, maybe he's gone on a trip. Call, call louder. Or maybe he's gone to the John and doesn't hear you. Call louder. And, uh, you know, uh, Elijah, some people say, needed a, uh, you know, may, maybe needed a, uh, uh, somebody to tame him down just a little bit. <laughs> but... Uh, he was he was uh, came on strong as a garlic milkshake and and uh, he 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 said all right now we're going to do th do things our way and he, he uh, our, our way and he, he he prepared his altar and he said in fact before we start the fire before I call on God before I pray uh, pour water on the on on the on the wood and he pours water on the wood and then they they built a trough and they pour so much water the water's running around the trough so this wood is really soaked it's really wet and then he calls out to the Lord but before he does this is. This is Elijah's prayer. It says, At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. And then he calls out and calls to God, and you know the rest of the story. Fire came from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, and the people had a visible sign, one that we still think of today, that God is God. And uh, that happened right here, right, right where you're standing. And I love that passage that says it was to turn the people's hearts back again. I don't know where you are with your relationship with the Lord, but... If you've been sort of dabbling in your faith and thinking, well, if my, I want my life to go well and I want success and I need God on my side. And, and when we, we, we mustn't approach the faith that way. That's like using God. That's, that's no different than, than, than those ancient ball worshippers long ago. Using God to, sec to secure our own success. Uh, we're invited to follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who is God, the God of Jesus Christ, who has invited us to walk in His way and to do things His way, to submit our hearts and our lives to Him. And so I want to invite you now for the next couple of minutes as we look out across this beautiful valley <laughs> to think about that and to have your own prayer in your own heart and your own life this morning to go God's way. There's no room in our hearts for a double altar. 
God is the jealous God. He, 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 he won't put up with, with rivals in your life. And if you've been feeling some sort of sense of being torn about that, and people, people struggle with that uh, all the time, so do I. But let's make this our prayer today to make God our God. And uh, we can do that right here in a place where that, <coughs> that great duel took place. You know, not, some, not somewhere else, but right here about 2,700 years ago.